friends, Andrea here. Um, today I am going to be making a matching pair of, or actually trio of bracelets for this pair of earrings that I made in a previous video. And so go ahead and stick around. I will show you. I kind of arranged everything and then took photos of it and then bagged it up so I wouldn't lose it because I was kind of doing some other stuff on my space here. So I'm going to start with the one that has the biggest beads. I'm going to move these two out of the way um, and I'll go ahead and dump out this bag. I also have some um, stretch cord here. I don't know the thickness of this stretch cord, but I'm going to guess and say it's on the thicker side. <laughs> um, I would say it's probably about equivalent to a 20 gauge piece of wire. Uh, just about so I don't know what that is so I have my stretch cord ready and I also have my GS hypo cement for the knot so just so you know you're gonna need those um, for this bracelet I'm going to use three of my 12 millimeter olivine faceted glass these are check glass beads um, I have looks like four that, could be, that might be wrong but I have four um, of these eight millimeter faceted black. They might be crystals. They might just be glass. I'm not sure. I have five just, I think these might be just round glass beads and they're really shiny. Um, five of those and these are eight millimeter as well. I have looks like six eight millimeter uh, faceted glass. These are sort of yellow with like an opaque center and like a transparent outer swirly thing. Um, but these are rondelles, they are not round. They are sort of like a squashed flattened donut shape. So I've got six of those. And then I have these four silver disc kind of spacers. These are silver, sterling silver Bali beads from my stash. And I've been trying to figure out a way to use these for a really long time. So I'm glad that I'm going to be able to incorporate these. And then I have, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 daisy spacers. So that's what I'm going to start out with. I'm going to go with my bigger bead, start out with the bigger bead because this has the biggest hole and I think it'll be easier to hide the knot. Um, so I'm going to put that on and then I'm going to use one of my big chunky silver spacers and then I'm going to string another one of my 12 millimeter olivine and then I'm going to do my spacer and I'm going to do my third olivine and my spacer onto my stretch cord. This is still attached by the way. I don't have uh, like a piece cut so I did already arrange these and make sure that it was going to fit on my wrist so um, and that it would be the right size for me I would recommend whatever beads you're using in your stash, make sure that it's going to fit around your wrist. You might need to add or subtract beads because your wrist might be bigger or smaller than mine. Mine is actually about six and a quarter inches and I usually have to, uh, um, when I'm using larger diameter beads, I have to accommodate for that and make the bracelet more than six and a quarter inches. And the, the bigger the bead, the more diameter of around your wrist it'll take up. So you might have to just kind of play with it. Um, so I added on one of my eight millimeter round shiny beads and now I'm going to put in a, um, a daisy spacer. If I can get it on here. Sometimes those are tricky. I'm gonna put on my faceted glass and another daisy spacer and the round shiny eight millimeter. Okay, so I'm done with that. And then I'm going to put on another daisy spacer. I'm gonna do my yellows. So I'm gonna do three yellows each divided by a daisy spacer. Okay, so one, two, three, I realize that just watching me string beads is not the most exciting thing, but um, but I figured you guys might want to see what my process looks like. So now I'm going to take 
my faceted and instead of doing it where it's like round faceted round I'm doing the opposite so I'm doing faceted round faceted you might wonder why I'm doing this this way it's because that those five round beads is all I had so I had to be creative in how I made the repeat pattern um and I think I've said this on my channel many times before but I do like to do things in threes or odd numbers in general um and I it looks nicer to my eye so um so I've done my three black and now I'm going to go back to my three yellow and I'm just adding the daisy spacer between each one and there's no real reason I'm adding the daisy spacer I just feel like it looks nice it adds that something special but it doesn't keep the beads really far apart the way um, adding a small like uh, eight millimeter bead or something uh, not eight millimeter eight o seed bead would do anyway um, so I'm putting that spacer on and now I'm going to go back to this pattern with my last three so I have my shiny round my daisy spacer my hex or sorry, hex, why did I say that? My um, faceted glass and my last daisy spacer, and my last shiny round. And then I'm going to wrap up with this big, and it's got a big hole, you can see that? That's where I'm going to hide my knot. So um, as you guys might be familiar with stretch cord, you want to either pre-stretch it before you start stringing it, or you want to stretch it before you make the knot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is weird and tedious because I like to stretch it 20 times at least. Sometimes I'm just, you know, getting kind of into it and I keep going like 50 times or something. But um, you just make sure that you hang on really tightly to your strands so that you don't accidentally make beads go flying across your desk. So this is how it's going to look at the end when it's finished. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stretch that now. So I, um, I didn't uh, pull super hard. I just want to show you how far I'm pulling. Like if I'm, if I was holding this here and here, and I pulled just one side only, I'm only pulling it to about 12, 13 inches. So I'm, I'm pretty much pulling it about double what its current length is. I'm not pulling it any farther than that. Like I'm not trying to break it. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and make a knot. I actually am going to make three knots. And I always make three knots. You notice I have a thing with threes. <laughs> um, and I try to tighten the second and third knots a lot so that they'll be smaller and fit through the hole a little bit better of my bead. Because I want it to kind of lie down a little bit or lay flat I guess this is actually moving more than I want it to but I think it'll be okay yeah that seems pretty sturdy okay so I have done my knot I'm gonna go ahead and get my GS hypo cement I'm holding this so that I don't get the hypo cement on my fingers, but it's kind of like a foregone conclusion. It almost always gets on my fingers, but we'll try not to. And I just need a tiny little dot to come out of that little hole, like just a little bit, not that little bit, but like not a ton. I'm, I just pinched the bottom ever so slightly to get a tiny bead of liquid to come out because once you get this thing going, you can't get it to stop pouring out. And uh, 
I don't need to have a huge glop of glue. I don't need to make a mess. I don't want it to gum up its cap and have it be um, impossible to get open next time. Ask me how I know. And I just try to go all around the knot with this glue as it's coming out. As soon as it gets moving, I try to get, you know, every, every possible angle with the glue. Ideally, the three knots is going to hold my knot, or yeah, my closure in place, but the glue doesn't hurt. And I also try not to cut it too much when it's first drying. I try to wait until it's um, it's been dried or cured for a couple of hours at least before I cut the ends really closely. And I'm just going to use my little trimmer here to cut the ends off, not super close. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and try to wrinkle this little guy into this opening. If I can. <laughs> this little one is not cooperating, but that's fine. We'll get him in there. So ideally, I'm hiding the knot in this bead and then I'm closing it up. I'm going to go ahead and put this, oops, that in there just to make it easier to hide that knot. And I'm going to put that aside to dry. So that's one bracelet down. Pretty. And it goes really well with this. So I'll put that aside now and get started on the second bracelet. So I'm going to try and get this all done as quickly as I can. I'm hoping to get it under 30 minutes, but we'll see. Um, so the next bracelet, uh, as you guessed, is the same colors. And instead, I have these two big beads, just like that one right there. So this is going to be kind of a focal. All right, so I'm going to start with my larger eight millimeter faceted glass and I'm not going to put a daisy spacer between every so I'm just doing three of my eight millimeter glass and then I'm adding a daisy spacer then I'm doing three of my yellow these are the same ones as the other bracelet three of the yellow eight millimeter rondelles and then I'm doing a spacer and then this green glass bead is like a Picasso cut, uh, like a Picasso faceted glass. It's olivine. I don't know. I think it's kind of a cathedral cut is what that might be called. But it's, it's kind of pretty and it has this interesting Picasso effect on the top. It looks like it's sort of been painted or something on the top and bottom. And that you like sort of sliced the paint part off so I think it's supposed to make kind of a mimic a gem uh, anyway so I'm gonna slide that on and they are slightly uh, pear shaped so I am going to make sure that I keep the fat end going in the same direction as I string them on and I'll so so see if you can kind of see like that side is a little fatter than that upper side so I'm just kind of putting them on the same alignment then I'm going to get my silver bead, and if I can find the other side, it will string just right. But <laughs> sometimes it's not quite drilled all the way through, or it just isn't having it. Let's try this one. It worked in testing. <laughs> I can see it on the inside, but it's not going through. I think it's just getting stuck in the top there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my little bead reamer out and just see if I can. Okay, I'm going to just 
cream it a little bit. And this is kind of like a little, I don't know, a drill bit, <laughs> if you want to think of it that way. And I'm just kind of opening the hole up so that I have an easier time of guiding my elastic through. Okay, and now I'm going to put three more of these faceted black ones on. And then I'm going to do my, let's see, we'll try and get it to go through this. Oh, and it went through perfect this time. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Just wants to be that way. I'm going to do my three faceted green glass beads. Kind of an olivine. It's not quite the same. You'll notice it's not the exact. I mean, it's pretty close. So anyway, I'm not that worried about it because it's going to be on my wrist. And I'm the one who gets to admire it. So... It's all good. I'm going to put my yellows on, just kind of repeating the same pattern. And I'm going to put my little green for my little spacer bead. I don't know why I said green. And then I'm going to put my three black beads at the bottom and my final daisy spacer. And we're done. So it is going to be sort of a repeated pattern um, and this would be sort of the focal point. So that's what that looks like finished. I'm going to go ahead and stretch it before I finalize it. But I just want to show it how it looks on. I'm going to pretend like it's finished and put it on. So it's got a little wiggle room. I have about a finger's width of room here and that's okay it's not super tight on me I want it to kind of move around what if I get fat I mean I <laughs> what if I gain weight um, and then this other one next to it so you can kind of see how they complement each other and I could rotate it and have the yellow one sticking out in the front but it just gives you an idea of how they start to stack together when you make like a complimentary set. All right, so I'm gonna do my tw my um, 20 stretches. I did 30 stretches. <laughs> it's okay. And then I'm going to do my little knot. I try to keep tension in there before I add my second knot because I feel like it's just sitting there waiting to be uh, pulled tight. And if I don't do that, if I pull it tight at the end, from the top only, then I don't know, it just doesn't seem to get as tight. Um, and the knot at the bottom tends to be bigger if I don't do that way. So I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do one more knot just because it feels like it needs it. All right, so you can see this knot is, you know, kind of, it's caterpillaring. It's got like a little length and that's okay. I'm going to hide that knot inside of this bead, ideally. And this will, this is stretch material. It's like, you know, going to move in there and it can smash itself together and flatten out. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this and cut it and I'm going to stuff it inside the hole of the next two beads so that I can kind of use that as leverage to pull it inside of this bead once I add my elastic or once I add my cement. Alright, so I've stretched it. I'm holding it open so that I can um, apply my GS Hypo Cement. And this, the cool thing about this GS Hypo is it has this like really fine needle thing that goes in there so that it doesn't get all clogged up. Because if you did, if you didn't put that needle in there, oh yes, it would get clogged up. 
So I just kind of pinched the bottom there and I'm going to wait for the uh, for the stuff to travel up because it will. I just don't, I've got to be patient. I don't want to squeeze out more than I need. Let's see if I can do this up close if you can see it. I don't know if it'll focus. I might have to get like a little sheet of white paper to put down over everything so you can so you can truly just see this. Oh, now I've got a big old glop of glue that came out because I was not careful, but I'm gonna try and smooth it out on both sides of that knot. I don't want a ton. And if it starts to kind of string out on you, just kind of twirl it around like a glue gun. I don't know if you guys are familiar with using glue guns. And then um, I'm going to try and get this back in and close it off as quickly as possible, even though I'm going to go back and use it in just a second. All right, so now I have some, some leverage to pull this in to this hole. I don't want to have to stretch it too much, but I want to pull, let's see if I can get that on screen. There we go. And it just pulled ever so slightly. I kind of pulled this, ah, there it goes. Now it's right on the inside. Um, but using that strand on the other side of the bead kind of helped me uh, stretch the knot if you will, kind of make it flatter. And I'm going to go ahead and trim off this little piece. I don't need all that. I apologize if my hands are looking a hot mess right now. They are pretty dry. I've been doing a lot of hand washing and dishes. And I'm going to shove this if I can get it into that one that daisy spacer it's kind of a tight fit and I'll shove it through this I'll trim it later a little bit more but for now that is good okay so here's my second bracelet done and I have a third bracelet to do so I guess we better get moving and here's the last one And it's a little bit different of beads. It's going to be smaller. This is not a focal. This is more of an accent bracelet. So it's just basically its only job is to be the stacker piece. So um, I have this kind of focal bead and it has a bigger hole than all the others. So I'm going to use this one as my first bead strung. And this is a sterling uh, silver Bali bead just like these two and these uh, kind of disc ones. It has been pre-drilled, but sometimes it doesn't find it because they're kind of hollowish inside. All right, so I'm gonna start with my yellow this time, my little yellow, and these are kind of like, they remind me of sea glass. They're kind of matte texture and they're six millimeter round beads. Oops, I forgot to put my daisy spacer between. On this one, I'm going to do a daisy spacer between every one. So there we go. And again, with the threes, you know how this is going to go. I'm going to do three yellow. And then I'm going to do three of the green. These are faceted AB. Can you see that shine? It's so pretty. It's got like, oh, it just catches the light. And that AB finish is what kind of gives it like a blue sheen. Um, but these are olivine six millimeter faceted check glass. And I'm going to go ahead and string my daisy spacers on. These are four millimeter daisy spacers. I don't know if they're actually sterling silver or, or what, but it doesn't matter. They don't really make a lot of contact with my skin. So they don't really bother me too much. And next I'm going to do some black beads. And I, I don't know how many I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to do all of them. I think there's 10 here. 
So I'm going to just do a daisy spacer between every bead. And these are six millimeter faceted. I think these might be more crystal than glass. They're not the same as the Czech glass. You can kind of tell there's a difference in how sharp these cuts are versus these ones are more rounded, but um, still very pretty, all of them. But it was just one of those things where I was getting down, I'm getting down to, you know, what's left of my bead stash and I'm not buying any new beads. So when I get down to the bottom, I've got to really just kind of start mixing different kinds of materials together that I normally wouldn't do and get creative about color schemes and um, at some point I might just have to start making my own beads. I've got plans for paper beads, I've got plans for polymer clay beads, but the issue is always time. Those are very time consuming. The other thing for polymer clay is it uh, has to bake in the oven and it's like the peak of summer. I don't live in a place that has AC, which might be crazy for some folks to think about, but I don't have any air conditioning. And so when it is hot outside, I'm not gonna turn on my oven if I can avoid it. So I'm doing my next three AB finish olive. I, I added all of my black ones and just Every single bead has a daisy spacer, so. These, I'm, I, I kept the bag here, um, but I got all of these, these uh, Swarovski six millimeter, oh, they are Swarovski, okay. Six millimeter faceted jet round beads from Art Beads, and then I think I got these daisy spacers from artbeads.com as well, and, um, that was, I think it was last fall in November for Black Friday. But I, I set myself a limit on how much I was going to spend. I think I limited myself to $50 including shipping. So I didn't get a lot. Uh, but there was a lot of discounts applied and I was happy with what I got. And I am still using them. I haven't run out. Uh, so I've got this done. This is the final look. I think that looks really cute. And it's going to be smaller, so it's not really the main focus, but it is the same colors and it'll blend nicely. So I'm going to stretch this one again, just like the other ones. And I'm going to go ahead and tie three knots if I can keep this knot really thin and narrow. I will try my best to keep it really slender knot because I don't have a lot of space to work with. That bead hole is rather small and I want to be just really careful about not having this giant knot that caterpillars. And the reason why I go in from the other side, from the bead beaded side and pull is just to tighten that knot from the kind of the back side, I guess you will, because I've already pulled it tight on the top of the knot and the bottom of the knot was a little looser when I first started because it was, you know, down at the bottom. So I feel like that tends to give me a little bit more maneuverability when I'm trying to suck it into the hole <laughs> of a slender bead. Um, the other thing I'm going to do, which I did on my previous bracelet, is I'm going to trim and I'm going to drag that um, cord end through this bead if I can might be tough because there's not a lot of room so I might have to stretch the bead the cord between and get that bead in or get that hole yeah it's pretty tough it is pretty tough to do I apologize if I'm going off screen it's really hard to do that 
I'm going to try one other thing. I'm going to go ahead and angle my, cut this at an angle and see if that helps me at least get it in. I don't think it's going to help. <laughs> no, it's not making a difference. All right, well, I tried. I tried. So I'm going to go get my GS Hypo Cement. And I'm just going to basically pinch it up on that little tiny corner and see if I can get that moving again. And it's already coming out. So I just need a little bit on both sides of the knot. I'm not trying to get it all loopy. It's getting stringy on me. <laughs> and close that up. It's got a little extra. I don't want it to get um, too glued into the cap. So I have this bead here. I'm kind of stretching this just so I can try and pull this through. And I'm hoping you can see that. It will go through, I think it will. Just needs a little bit of a tug. Ah, there we go. And it got through and now I have my two bead ends here. I'm just gonna trim this one a little shorter and I'm gonna leave that the way it is. It has a little bit of glue, kind of trail, <laughs> snail trail. I'm just gonna leave it alone. And then I'll trim those ends later when I'm done letting it dry. But if you wanna see how it looks on, I'll go ahead and put all three bracelets on my wrist and that way you can kind of see how they all look together as a group, as a grouping. So I did group them intentionally or design them intentionally so that the yellow one, uh, this bead and the yellow on the side was the focal. Uh, for this, it's the black is the focal with these two silver beads. And then for this, it's the three green that are the focal with these silver beads between. So then they all sit on my wrist with the focal area. If they were all in the same place, it's not the same color. And there, you if you look on the back side, they all are black, but they're all different sizes and different textures. And some of them have a lot of silver, some of them have less. So if I was to rotate my wrist around, there's lots of different stuff going on. I could easily kind of twist this one and twist that one and get something different to look at. Anyway, I do kind of, when I'm working, I can't, I kind of tend to go like this and just rotate them and <laughs> play with them. So it's, it doubles as a fidget toy. And uh, so I like that side. I think it looks really cute. I was intentionally trying to design something that would work with a specific outfit, specific summer outfit that I wear a lot that has this color green and this black color in, um, doesn't have anything else but just the green and black. But I thought that having that yellow in there would be a nice little pop-up color. And you could, you could arrange these bracelets on your wrist however you want. You could just wear one. You don't have to wear all three, depending on what you're going for. But that's the final look. And then I have this pair of earrings to match. And these are the Big Mama earrings so they are definitely you know not uh baby earrings they're not they're gonna be big dangly earrings i did want to mention that i pulled out some other uh beads here to if i wanted to to make some kind of like dangling stuff to to dangle off and i was basically going to re like replicate what i did down here and um, I'm not going to do it in the video, but I might decide. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it, and then I'll decide if I like it or not. I'm just not sure which bracelet I would put it on or where I would put it. And it already feels pretty busy as it is, so I'm not sure if it will um, suit this 
this set or not. And I, I did the same thing. I pulled out, this was a piece that I had made a long time ago and I didn't, uh, I took it apart. I took that necklace apart and I just had these two little legs here. So I was going to cut them open and re, re, um, re put them onto another head pin and then throw them on as like a little dangle somewhere. But I was just going to use three, just like this one. I was just going to make it like that, but with these beads instead. So we'll see. I may not do that, but I am going to go ahead and just um, show off how it looks. So um, I'll probably make it and then include it in the, like in the cover photo. So you can see that it, it could be worn with or without these extra little charms essentially. And if you wanted to, you could put the charms onto like a little clasp, something along this, this line, you know, like a little lobster clasp, clasp, I can talk. And then you can just attach it on to the bracelet wherever you want it to go, but um, totally optional. Anyway, I think I'm done for the night with this set. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this set and hope you learned something about design process and what I, my steps that I follow and what I do. And all these fit my wrist, but they all have a different length. Uh, I just made sure that the inner diameter was always going to be uh, fitting on my wrist. So I, I tried them on after I designed them and then I put them back in the bags after taking photos of the layout so that I could easily come back and recreate it on video. But I did design these a couple of days ago and then came back and created them when I had some more time to film. Because I didn't want to make it and then not show you guys. <laughs> so I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this tutorial. I hope you'll check out the earring tutorial as well. And if you are enjoying this content, I hope you'll like and subscribe and also make sure to find me, find me on social media because I do a lot of other stuff besides jewelry. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye.